All right, so here we are in Substance Painter, where we left off last time after we baked the maps for uh, normal map and whatever. So as you can see, fresh setup right here. First thing we're gonna do is hit this one right here. Uh, one time, let's go for one. I'm gonna head straight into it. Um, head over to the base color and set the R to one and the red to zero, B to zero, so it's pure and pure red. Then save the normal height and metallic. Crank up the roughness, you don't have to, it's just, it looks a bit, it's a bit nice to look at and a bit more clear what we are doing in my opinion. Uh, but technically you don't have to disable these, it's just something uh, I find good practice. So from there we're gonna add, um, let's go for a white mask for now. And then we're gonna hit Control D, and all the time, Control D, there we go. And let's change this green one, red zero, and blue zero. And then we go over here, and we're gonna get blue one. Come on, hello. Uh, one, thank you very much. And red zero, there we go. So now we've got our blue and green and red. Details of name them red, green, and blue. This is gonna be, believe me, it's gonna be so extremely easy. Um, so if you select them all and hit Ctrl G, we can have folder. That's our RGB stuff, and then we can add an extra layer on top of this. Let's make this one pure black. Same thing. Let's do the roughness to this. The same everything else. Copy it again, and we're gonna go to pure white. Select everything, Ctrl G for folder, and then we're just gonna call this our alpha map. There we go. Um, so yeah, let's head back over here. And like I said, this is where our rocks will be driven from, in essence. So, for example, if you have a more rocked rock or a more rough rock, you might want to put that on the base here. We can, for example, use a nice, in our masks here, we can uh, use a dirt ground mask if you want to. Just look at what works best for your rock. I'm just going to show a different couple of examples. Um, and please just, what I recommend is honestly just watch this little part, pause it and put on some music, some real bangers and just, just go for it. Like really do your own thing, try to make it as beautiful as possible. I just want you to give you the tools so you can take these tools and techniques and make something absolutely mesmerizing, amazing out of it. And again, please, uh, make sure if you make anything, please, please, please send me a message on Instagram, Discord. I'll put my details on screen right now. And otherwise they're easy to find on my YouTube channel and so on. I would love to know, love to see what you make out of this. All right, so our red channel right here. Let's get started and put this to black instead. And for this one, we're gonna head over to a fill layer. So we have a fill map right here, head over here, and we have all these texture maps right here. So what we can do, for example, if you want to, uh, let's disable our alpha right there. Uh, what we can do, let's even put this one on top, just so it's a bit of better view. As you can see, the mask is gray right now, hence where we get purple. If we put this fans into our fill layer right here, we get the following effect. <laughs> we don't want this, of course, but just to show you what, what's happening. So let's get a nice one. Uh, I want something a bit more general. Um, probably some spots right there. Something looks a bit natural as well. Let's see here. Uh, let's have a scroll through this. I feel this crunch map right here is probably a nice contender. Yeah, I would say if you're content with number 13, so let's drag this one on right here. And there we go, we got some paint splashes right there, can we get rid of those? Um, not really, let's see, uh, some have more options than others, it's just seeing what works for you and uh, what you like. Otherwise, I'm always a fan of number 7, which is this one right here. There we go, yeah, that's alright. Um, let's see, let's put the contrast. Bit higher, let's go for this. And I think this is nice. You can randomize it a couple of times as well. Uh, see what we like. Mm. 
I want something balanced for this one. I want pretty much balanced red and blue. And then green is going to be more specific, like a build up uh, from the base, for example, like I was talking about earlier. So let's see right here. Something nice and balanced and it looks natural as well. Um, let's just do this a couple of times. Yes, this is quite an all right one, I would say. Uh, I actually like the one we had in the beginning, to be fair. Uh, yeah, it's quite bad. The only thing I don't really like are these splash paints right here, whatever they're called. Um, so I'm just gonna randomize it a couple more times, so I just cut to a part where I'm happy. That's the magic of editing. All right, so I got something I like. Instead, I went for Grunge Map 8 with the following settings, randomized a couple of times. I think this is quite nicely balanced. We can even crank up or make some more contrast by doing this. Yeah, I think it's right. All right, perfect. So now let's head over to uh, red, blue, green, RGB. There we go. Um, what I might want to do, however, is um, put this, let's make this black instead. Put this one over here. There we go. So same with the suits. And then now we have the red to pretty much build up the, the, from, the from the base rock, so to say. Um, again, this will in a way get rid of the modularity in a sense. Uh, so really, again, depends on you, but as you can see, I did it pretty much right here as well. On the base, you have a bit more color variation. And once you put it together like this one has been flipped, it, it, it still works. So it's, it's an, uh, what kind of extremes you're going, I would say. If you're going to make the base pink, it might, uh, might show up a little bit, you know. But anyway, um, let's now add it over here to our masks. And what we can do from there, let's see. Uh, we have ground dirt, obviously that's quite a nice one. We have moss, it's more from on the top. Uh, we can infer it as well if you want to, and we have dirt ground over there. Uh, I'm feeling ground dirt, let's go for that one. So let's drag it on here. There we go, we got our two maps here. Do we want this? No, not really, so let's get rid of this one right here. Perfect, I was a bit afraid it was gonna crash there for, uh, for a little bit. All right. So let's head down here to our settings and let's crank this up a little bit. Uh, we can even lower the contrast a little bit. And there we go. Um, texture to Yeah, that works. Uh, I was just play around a little bit with these settings, see what happens. Actually, that's quite cool. Uh, but I think we don't really want that for now. Uh, position gradient. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh huh. Um, we have some more options here for the crunch map. Yeah, as you can see, you can build up from there. So let's crank up the flow of balance a little bit. So it's a bit higher up. There we go. And what we can do here as well is do Ctrl G to make a folder and call it the red mask. Add a black mask to this. Then we can add a fill to this. And then what we can do is we can head over here and we can get a crunch map in, for example, which will pretty much filter over this one. Uh, so we can have a bit more control if we want to. Uh, let's go for something more along the lines of this one right here. Is this something we want? Uh, no, not really. Uh, let's go for maybe this one. Oh, that's interesting. Not exactly the pattern we want, but we can do it for if we don't like it. We can just uh, do go here, add a filter, and let's go for a uh, blur. It can be a directional one as well if you want to. Let's go for a blur and we can just blur out a little bit right here, create a bit more contrast. Uh, same can be done with a filter on this one. Or what you can do as well is just use the global blur right here. Um, but overall, I would say I'm not too happy with this personally. So what we're going to do, we're just going to reset this by hitting white mask, we'll get rid of the layers right there. 
Let's head back over here and let's go for a good crown. Let's see how that looks. Interesting, not really what we want. It's more something we want in the masking part. Uh, we have some moss right here. So what if you take that? I quite like it actually, but then what you're gonna do is we're gonna infer it. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I think that's quite nice. And now we can use the contrast to... I think this is quite interesting to be fair. Yeah, I would say so. Um, perfect. So we have our red channel. Let's show some techniques there. Even to mask pretty much. Uh, we can actually get rid of this to be fair. So let's just make this over here again. Get rid of this. There we go. So we have our red, green and blue. Blue being the base green to mix things up a little bit up here and then red for the final layer perfect i'm just going to say with that here go back here and then over here what we can do what i would maybe recommend doing if we head over back to unreal now think about it maybe it's a better idea to put the the yeah, what's called uh, the a-bit occlusion into the rgb map so we can have a little, little look at this. Um, let's see if we take the alpha. I might do that. Uh, yeah, alpha is from that. But again, uh, it's really up to you in the end uh, to be able to fit there. But it might be smart to do that in the end. But for now, let's just go for the dirt cavities in here. And we just picked, we had a really nice one. So that's put a mask on this one, black mask. Let's go for dust occlusion, right over here. There we go. And let's increase the contrast and the dirt level as well. There we go, that's quite good. Uh, we can go a little bit over the top with it, in my opinion. Uh, there we go. Let's see what works. Crunch amount, let's lower that quite a bit. Increase the third level. Crunch amount. Quite like it a little bit to have it. Crunch scale. We can also change the scale if we want to. Uh, I might actually go for quite a big scale. It's actually quite nice. Uh, with my view as well. But edge masking. You see, it masks the edges. We can do that. Do we want to? Do we want to? Um, no, I don't think we really want to. Uh, use custom grunge, we can also use a custom grunge map as we want, but I think it's more fine. I quite like this, perfect. All right, so now let's export these maps and get them into engine. All right, perfect. So what you're gonna do is hit Control, Shift and E, which will bring up this tab right here. So from there, let's put our output directory, select the folder you want it, output it to, and then we're just gonna hit select folder. From there, we're gonna head over here and we're gonna choose the following uh, Rock RGB mask. And I will show it right here. So, here we have output templates, and we can hit a little plus right here to make a new one or select one and remove it. We can also copy ones if we want to. So, we have this one right here, and I will go for it. We export in it's in TJ file format, even though we can just set it to PSD here, which I would recommend. Um, but fine, um, what we can do is we can add channels right here. So for the RGB mask, we have our RGB, as we had earlier. And then the alpha um, or the opacity, which is right here. So to get this, you just hit RGBA. What you would do is you would uh, drag, for example, the base color on here. And then select RGB channels and the opacity right here. And it's like this one right here. Um, so I can make this setup right here and assign it here. To be fair, I'm a little bit lazy myself. What I often do is just make them together in Photoshop. Personally, it feels a little bit more visual. As in here, it happens behind the scenes where they get stacked. It feels a bit more technical. And uh, personally, for me, stacking everything together in Photoshop itself gives me a bit more freedom and also freedom to edit the files a bit more or refine them in Photoshop. Um, that's the setup you can go to. You can just copy it from here. I'll just show you this. It's extremely easy. Um, but you can also just export it into Unreal 
or engine 4 uh, packed for example so those are pretty much options then we have this D and we have it set to 4k let's just do it to be sure I'm quite quite certain it's uh, based on the texture size so it's always good so let's just export it then we're gonna head over to Photoshop and we have a file right here let's open it As you can see, we have a grayscale map right here, since this is the one we have opened right here. This one was hidden. So let's just head over to new, over to new, and type in 4.0.6. Let's copy this right here. That's all good. Um, yeah, so far, RGB color, a bit perfect, 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 perfect. Create. And what we can do from there is, first of all, let's select Ctrl A, Ctrl C, head over here. Unlock this right here, add an alpha layer, Ctrl V in there, perfect, we got our alpha set. Now what we can do is just close this, uh, hide it, get our um, RGB, do the same thing, Ctrl Shift E, hit export, back to Photoshop, file, open recent, and what we'll do if we just update this mask right here, there we go, Ctrl A, Ctrl C, and I just paste in here and there we go let's do it so we have our uh, our red layer right here our green layer and our blue layer we can also shift through it like this so that works absolutely perfect and then our alpha right there so let's get this into engine and test it out so save save as text right here let's set it to targa Let's call this RGB uh, T for texture. Just, I like to try and follow naming conventions. So you would do it in the industry as well. So better get used to it in your own projects. So T um, RGB uh, rock mask. There we go. Save this. Make sure it's 32 bits per pixel. Okay. Head back to engine. And then we're going to hit our folder. Drag in the TJ file right here. There it is. So let's hit Ctrl S. Let's head over here. Put it right here. Let's put this over here. Perfect. And now let's drag this in right here. As you can see, the text was changed. So what we can do now, of course, is different intensities. We can pretty much start fine-tuning that in a bit, but as you can see, it all works. We have our color right here. Uh, oh, sorry. We have the color right here for the first rock, which is the red one. Or, uh, as you can see on top, RGB. So we have red. Then we have blue right here. And we have our green there. As you can see, it's uh, resembling what we have made right here. And then we have the uh, dirt in there as well, which is color one. Oh, sorry, um, it's color three right here. So we can lower and increase that as well if we desire it so. Um, so yeah, otherwise we have to increase the button and decrease the button over here as well. Uh, so perfect, that all works wonderfully. Let's just save that. <laughs> it's quite interesting rock right there. But that shows that it works, which is absolutely perfect. As you can see, it even holds up quite well. I quite like the, the red top, so to say, here. It shows us where our textures would be. Um, so now it's time to make the next mask, which is um, the one that drives the, the lichen, the uh, edges, and so on. All right, back in Painter, let's delete this right here, and this one here too. And let's click three times. Let's call this one blue, let's call this one green, and this one red. So this will be the mask that drives the edge highlights and whatever. On blue, however, we know we want that to be the AO map, so we can do it straight away. Let's first of all make a new layer, disable everything except for roughness. There we go, make it black. And what we actually want to do as well, I kind of dislike that paint does this. It says it on like a mid-tone gray. Uh, but we want to make it full white, otherwise we're not getting the full range of grayscale values for our mask, so let's set it to full white. 
disable these and let's go to AO. So quite an easy one. Let's just head over to dust occlusion. There we go. We could even just put our AO map in here, um, which, which you might do. I think we've exported from uh, uh, from Marmoset over here. So let's leave this one actually blank. Um, let's put our AO map in there. Uh, just to remind myself, just gonna put dirt cavities in here. So we have something, let's get rid of sharpen. And let's see, let's put the contrast down. Uh, oh, it's actually a really awful mask. Nice to see it like this. <laughs> but sure, you know, it's, it gets the idea across. All right, so we're gonna put the AO map in here. Next up is green. And let's go for the edges. So I think the fabric edge, no, the, the gun edges are quite nice. We can just have a quick look through here. We have fabric threads as well. Might actually be interesting. So let's have a look if we can get rid of, um, I think that's quite good to have. These, um, what are they called? The, the lines, <laughs> I can't find the word. If we can get rid of that, that would be perfect. And it seems they originate from right here. Um, so let's see if we can change that. Let's see what we have here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Actually quite like this one. What we can do, however, is we could go in here and add a filter. And we could sharpen it a little bit if we want to. So let's type in sharp and sharpen. There we go. Let's the intensity to five. What does that do? It's interesting, I would say. Let's go for three. See how that works. Or oh, a bit lower, actually. At the same time, you might want to blur them even more. Um, really depends. Again, just experiment, see what works, what doesn't. Let's put the this one down a little bit. I actually quite like it if it overflows a little bit. Uh, I like those like scratches in there as well. I think this is actually quite nice already, to be fair. To be fair. And we have the clouds here, which we can use the precision. Let's see. Let's mask it out a bit more. I quite like this, I would say so. And what we can do as well, add a level note to it too. So we can push it a little bit further if you want to. Or push out those white values a bit more. I would say this is quite nice. Yeah, that should work. All right, perfect. So green is edge, and then we have the red channel left. And I think we had some dirt spots right here. So let's just drag that on. We'll make a mask automatically, and from there we can um, let's see. Let's put the global contrast on, thin out a little bit. Let's put this back and we have a clouds node right here, which we can just to. Oh, we still have this one. <laughs> I was like, huh? that's a bit weird. Um, yeah, as you can see, we have some nice lichen in a way. Uh, let's crank down the texture. Oh yeah, I quite like that what we had here. Yeah, a lot of different gray scale values. So that will bring some more variation of color in there. And let's call this red. Lichen or spots, whatever you want to call it. And that's pretty much it. We're already there. So what we're gonna do next is just again Ctrl Shift E, same settings, hit export, back to Photoshop, open recent, and there we go. So what we're gonna do is just hit Ctrl A, Ctrl C, and then over here just add just a base layer. There we go. We're going to head over to our green channel, the edges, and paste it in there. Next up, we're just going to repeat this two times. So let's hide this. Oh, sorry, that was the, uh, the red, the lichen, my bad. There we go. We're going to repeat this two times. Let's do it again. Export. And let's head over here. Update this one. Ctrl A, Ctrl C. Head back over here. That was our green channel for the edge. So let's paste it in there. And then last but not least, our AO. So let's do the same thing, export and open recent. Or even better to be fair, what we've got done and what we're going to do is uh, another blue channel. 
what you're going to do is just get the AO in. The AO channel right here. Let's just control A, control C, let's head over here and put it into our blue channel. There we go. And here we have our beautiful map. So let's again head over to save as. Textures, our texture folder, Targa. Let's call this T. Um, uh, will be a good name. So this rock mask, there we go. 32 bit, very important. Hit OK. Head back to Substance, uh, sorry, Unreal Engine. Let's get our mask in. There it is, perfect. And over here. And now we're just gonna position the camera so we have our rocks right here. I'm just gonna drag this one in right here. Perfect. And from there, what we can do is with all our settings right there. Absolutely stunning. Uh, so we have our options. Let's see. So first of all, we have our edge highlights and we have to crank those up a little bit. Let's put it to two. Oh, that's our lichen, sorry. So we have our uh, spots, so to say, right there, as you can see. And then over here we have our edges, I believe. Yeah, 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 perfect. So let's crank those up. Let's make them solid uh, pink. And then we can crank those up as well if you want to. Thanks, you go. And if you're not happy with them, what you can do is head over back to Photoshop. Um, for example, let's take out uh, this channel right here. Oh, sorry, no, that's not the um, actual edges, the dirt. Uh, let's go here. We can paste in here and what we can do from there is go to our adjustments for example let's get in the brightness and contrast node we can crank up the brightness and contrast from there merge it ctrl a ctrl c and just bring it back to our green channel and now we're just gonna save it again there we go say targa t rock mask yes okay back to unreal and from there, all you have to do is right click and just hit re import. And as you can see, it's a bit of an overkill. There we go. Now the edges really show up. So perfect. It looks like shit right now, but as you can see, it's pure to show that everything is working. We have our shader right here. So now all we have to do is play around with the settings, tweak things a little bit, and make a nice, beautiful rock. All right, so we are have neared or pretty much reached the end. So as you can see, we have this one right here. This is what I got with the following settings and the T-Rock mask we made and the RGB rock mask we made. We will get the following right here. Uh, one thing I forgot to update, however, is uh, very sloppy of me. This one right here, let's put this one on and let's put this one on. There we go. You know, this is quickly live right here, so Let's see, let's uh, lower, this is the, um, the lichen, yeah, it's quite nice, there we go. And then let's go over the edges, uh, let's go for something just maybe a bit more this way, perfect. And then for the dirt, let's go for a bit darker, I think that's quite nice, there we go, yeah. Uh, rock color, let's go for a bit blue on the base. You can see, I, I do this extremely quick without really thinking and the results are very strong, I might say. So that's how powerful and easy this method is, honestly. Um, I think this all is good. Yeah, like we don't even have to change that much. So let's hit save, let's hit save. And there we go. So we went over the entire process. As you can remember, it started out as a little cube in Maya. And here we are at the end. So we have our basic texture right here. But the main focus, of course, is on this. And this is pretty much what we get straight out from the shader. As you can see, minor adjustments, really small tweaks. And this is something I just quickly made together. So you see, it holds up extremely well. It looks nice. It looks realistic. It has the right PBR values. And it's extremely adaptable and flexible. And of course, we can just scale the rock as well. Everything was scale along with it. I would say we did a magnificent job, and I hope you did as well. So again, if you have any 
Usus or whatever, please send them my way. I would love to see what you end up making. If it's for a scene, if it's a single rock, please, I would love to know. I really hope this helped. I hope I was able to provide you with the right tools in the right presentation format as well that made it easy for you to learn in the way you want to learn. As often it's a follow along, but I also hope I gave you a bit of freedom on how you want to go about this and how what works best for your case scenario. All with all, I hope you enjoy. I hope to see you in the next course or next tutorial. There are a lot of free tutorials on my YouTube channel. Um, otherwise, hopefully in the next course. I really appreciate it if you can leave a honest review or wherever you bought this uh, package from, this, um, this, this course. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really hope to see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>